It's the summer solstice extravaganza, a festival unlike any other in the world. Join us for five days and five nights in the beautiful Caribbean island of Antigua. Come and full joy the pristine, beautiful beaches. The historical sites on the island tour. Indulge in the experience of the cannabis tour. And of course, the sunrise and the sunset hike to Green Castle Hill. The Stonehenge of the Caribbean amongst the megaliths that align with the stars. Remember that this is an all-inclusive wellness event. To include your plant-based fully vegan meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, transportation and accommodation will be provided for, plus yoga, meditation, and chalice talk with the Honorable Priest Isaac. Plus meet and greet with family and friends and with the whole Rastafari experience and Tiga team. Join us again from the 19th to the 23rd of June for the summer solstice extravaganza. To reserve your space today, visit our website priestisaacinstitute.com or email us priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com. children we need them redeem them and clean them you see them or else the enemy will come and scheme them family i mean that family education for the nation that's full of salvation biology astronomy and african theology geography family i love that family Whatever the age or the stage that youth will be engaged with tutorials, activities, and videos from the studios of the Priest Isaac Institute of Holistic Knowledge. Family. The International Homeschool Program is designed and recommended for all ages. The psychological state of our children is very important, especially in the environment that most of us live in. The International Homeschool Program provides online classes, activities, and videos that are fun for the youth and edifies them of their African heritage as well as the higher sciences. To enroll your family today, visit www.priestisaacinstitute.com, go to the main website, and search for Youth Corner. Or you can email priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com for a course sample. Thank you, thanks. The Tiger's Nest is a Radio Anu International exclusive program brought to you by the Honorable Priest Isaac. The Tiger's Nest is aired live every Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. local standard time. Become a subscriber through our website by visiting www.priestisaacinstitute.com and choose between our subscription plans. Or you can subscribe by using the details provided in the link below. Oh, yes, blessed love, give thanks for your presence with us. Of course, you know, we glorify the life giver and the keeper of life, Emperor Haile Selassie the first. I welcome you to another edition of the Tiger's Nest, a very special edition of the Tiger's Nest. And give thanks for all of those who will be seeing the premiere on Radio Anu TV. Hey, of course, you know, you are definitely listening and well in locked and in tune to the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge. And you are on the website, priestisaacinstitute.com. And again, 
for those who will be viewing the presentation. The link for the website is in the description below the video. And of course, the website will lead you straight to Radio Anu itself. Definitely the Tiger's Nest even in program every monday tuesday wednesday and thursday 7 p.m sharp we are right here with you let me at this moment encourage you to be a subscriber to the tiger's nest radio program and what that does that will ensure that you never miss another episode of the tiger's nest ever again plus all the additives that comes with that which are many for sure hey did i introduce myself i'm your humble servant for this evening honorable priest isaac definitely here to take it to another level this evening in the tiger's nest i want to take some time to highlight the spiritual aspect of the cannabis sativa and of course as it relates to the whole aspect of its history just the term sativa alone comes from that sattva which is really the spirit of the plant and of course every plant has a spirit but the sativa has an interesting spirit and that is why it has been used of course for thousands of years tens of thousands of years from the creation of time for spiritual enhancement. Now, of course, in this world where we're dealing with science and history, even technology, this is why we have to go for, you know, what is referred to as the source and, and bring the evidence. So we can begin with the Ebers papyrus. And of course, the Ebers Papyrus specifically, I think they have it somewhere stored away in Leipzig, Germany, or somewhere thereabouts. But the Ebert's Papyrus really is an ancient medical text that was stolen by a brother by the name of Ebert's. But it really came from the ancient um, kingdom of Kemet, the ancient Egyptian dynastic kingdoms where we would have mastered the art of medicine, and of course, all aspects of medicines for uh, um, thousands upon thousands of years. So within the Ebers Papyrus, we're talking about even before this modern age and modern time of modern medicine, we would have already uh, given the, the, the antidote and the solution for all the different ailments and and, and how to cure different diseases and even dealing with the eye and all the different herbs and their functions, the cannabis, what is known as Shem Shem Su. Shem Shem Su has been highlighted in the Ebers papyrus. And Shem Shem Su now itself, when you observe it, is the royal cannabis. Now, historically speaking, Cannabis was literally found, at least the pollen of the cannabis found in the uh, the tomb of the mummy of Ramesses II. And of course, Ramesses II is Ursa, Ma'atra, Setepenra, Ramesi, Murray, Amin. Now we're talking about agency. We're talking about the ancient kingdom of Egypt or Kemet the 18th dynastic period going into the 19th dynastic period. Ramesses II is referred to as Ramsey the Great because of, you know, the length of his rule and, and, and the, the spread of his power and even the growth of the economy and the infrastructure that he had set down during his time. Marcus Messiah Garvey refers to Ramesses II as one of his favorite pharaohs. In fact, he highlights Ramesses I and Ramesses III. And I will repeat, the proper name is <clears throat> Ursa Ma'atra, Setepenra, Ramesi, Murray Amen, the first, the second, and the third. And again, cannabis pollen was found in the tomb of Ramsey, Ramesi, the great interesting and of course when you observe 
you know, just the glyphs of the great god Ramesses, you know, it you will observe what appears to be, you know, a, a burning flock that shall not be quenched then, you know, and many other ancient glyphs, you see the individuals carrying the incense burner, and in many cases, it looks very close to a pipe that is being smoked. In fact, the Shishat, Shishat now is the goddess of wisdom and the goddess of memory. And of course, you know, above Shishat's head is the sign of that plant, Shim Shim Su. The leaf of the cannabis is above her head. And she's considered the goddess of wisdom. That is why her king, her husband, is the god of wisdom, Tahuti. Now, she is symbolic of the librarian of his knowledge. For Tahuti is the individual that is considered, again, not just the god of, but the father of wisdom. That is why Tahuti is referred to as thought. This is where we get the term thought from. You understand. And Tahuti is the ibis bird, the ibis, cannabis. Mm -hmm. Exactly, cannabis. Now, this is very deep because, as you know, the effect of the cannabis is all about, you know, you know, activating the whole meditation, psychoactive, the, the opening of the portals and, and leading you into different dimensions with different perspectives. That's just what it is. Mm -hmm. And of course, Tauti, the God of wisdom, all of the knowledge that he would spit out, all of the information that he would scribe, it is Shisha acting like somewhat of the Akashic records that will take all of his information. And this is why she is considered as his librarian. So she has all the information that he would have spat out. She's his number one student then. She knows everything that he knows because he would have taught that to her. And she is the one with the cannabis leaf above her head. That is Shisha, the librarian, the goddess of wisdom and the wife of Tahuti, mm -hmm, which is taught. So you can clearly see the presence of the cannabis in the ancient world. And when we say the ancient world, it hardly gets more ancient than this. Because we're talking about, again, the Ebers papyrus. It doesn't really belong to Mr. Ebers at all, but still, we know what we're talking about. The ancient Kemetic papyri, speaking of all the medical herbs, and Shim Shim Su is seen there up front. And again, the Shim Shim Su was fully discovered in the tomb of Ramesses, the pollen thereof. And Ramesses seems to be someone that does a lot of blazing at time. And of course, Shishat. She shot without a doubt. The cannabis is above her head and her position is that of wisdom. Mm -hmm. The librarian, the individual that holds all of the truth, which was produced by the God of wisdom himself, uh, Tahuti. So when we are dealing with the cannabis, we must understand its ancience. Even in Japan, we're talking about 10,000 years BCE. In caves, you see um, the cave paintings and the cannabis being expressed because that was a part of the ritual of the day. And then just to show you in the Oriental world how important the cannabis um, was and of course still is, you have the ancient herbalist, one known as Shen Nong. And Shen Nong was also considered to be a spiritual healer. Shen Nong was considered to be a mystic. Some people worship him as a god. And in his materia medica, the Chinese uh, classical materia uh, medica that deals with medical herbs, Mr. Shen Nong speaks about the herb known as Ma. Now we're talking about up 3000 years BCE when this writing came out. So that's about 5,000 years ago. And Ma is being mentioned as one of the prime healing herbs. Now, Ma or Mafaizan is what you would refer to cannabis as in the ancient Chinese world. So you would always see Mr. Shen Nang either dressed in the green herbs 
or always gnawing or chewing on the stem or the leaves of the green herbs or always around the cannabis tree itself and of course many other herbs. So again, the term is ma, M-A, ma. And ma literally is an ancient word for cannabis, which was used by the Chinese and many in the Far East in general. And then of course, and again, we're talking about 3000 years, B, C, E. And then you have who they consider as the first Chinese surgeon. That's Hao Tao. And Hao Tao about 200 AD. The, 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 the individual that, again, the Chinese recognize as the first uh, surgeon. And uh, he would have created an, an, an anesthesia. This is before the Western world, at least a thousand years or more before the Western world would have, quote unquote, discovered anesthesia. And this anesthesia, the main ingredients would have been ma, or the, the mafaisan, which was used in surgery, you know, to take away the pain. And not just to take away the pain now, but to, you know, ensure that you have a, a, a clean, um, uh, you know, antiseptic, you know, to take away all toxins and disease and all of that stuff. Remember that the, the 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 Western world as such was not even bathing their skin, much less to have this level of cleanliness <laughs> where you could talk about opening people and 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 fixing their organs and making sure you can sew them up in cleanliness and and everything disinfected and all of that. Mm -hmm. So according to the Chinese record, Wan Hao Tao was the innovator of that. But again, I'm just highlighting this. This is from their records. I just showed you prior to this, that in ancient Kemet, we already conquered that even prior to that. You know, we already highlighted the use of cannabis 10,000 years BCE in the Japanese uh, cave. So everyone has their own legend of those who they want to highlight. But the point I'm making here is that the cannabis sativa has been utilized for thousands upon thousands of years, not just as a plant and by mistake, but literally refined and used in a constructive, civilized manner to heal and to inspire, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, in the book of of odes, a shaking that is by the legendary Confucius, and also in the Canon of Rites. He writes about the spiritual use, again, of ma, which is the cannabis and its importance in spiritual growth. And then now, this is very important, eh? the evidence now, the literal hardcore evidence of the use of cannabis in the ancient world. I mean, it's almost too numerous to mention. You can start with the burial mounds. In fact, almost all the burial mounds, these Kurgan burial mounds and, and Scythian burial mounds in um, Siberia and, and China and other places in Europe, when, uh, when these mounds have been discovered and the grave sites would have been um, uncovered, many of these burial mounds would have remains of cannabis of some sort. Now, it's well known that the Scythians would have utilized cannabis. In fact, I think they would have been the first, if not to, to refine the term that is used today, cannabis. But for sure, they're well known to be users of the cannabis as well as the Kurgan people as well. So finding remains of cannabis in their tombs and in their mounds is nothing surprising. You comprehend. So we have evidence of uh, whole buds being found and seed and resin and burnt uh, um, stem and, and leaf, etc., found in many of these tombs, just in the same way that they would have found pollen in the tomb of Ramesses II 
and and I, I would have read reports that they would have found hemp fiber in the tomb of Akhenaten, but I, I do not have the full detail on that because I know they never found Akhenaten. But um, obviously he would have had a place set aside, yes, for his burial. So that must have been the area where they would have found the fiber, hemp fiber, as they would have referred to it as in the tomb of Akhenaten. But we're talking about, again, once more, in the Kurgan burial mound, you know, where you would find, again, China back in Siberia, in Russia. And of course, the Scythians, remember the Scythians have this practice where they would bring the ganja and put it on some hot coals and just sit around the fire, inhale it, and start to do their whirling dances and, and making noise in the forest. That is their culture. And of course, it, it stems from the use of a cannabis. And then, of course, in the more Hindu and Zoroaster tradition, you have the Vedas. And remember, the Vedas are spiritual books, spiritual writings, again, of the Hindu and, and other traditions of that area. The Rig Veda, the uh, uh, Yuja Veda, the Sama Veda, etc. But now, Bam, listen to this, Bam. Not necessarily ma now. In the Oriental world, you hear ma and mafahaisan. But the, the Indian world as such would refer to the cannabis as ba or bang, banga. All right. So bang now is considered to be one of the five sacred plants in the fourth Veda. Let me repeat that. Bam, as it's referred to as by the Hindu tradition and the Zoroaster tradition and the Buddhist tradition. Bang is considered to be one of the five sacred plants in the fourth Veda. So this is why now when you hear the term bam, maybe you would consider the bomb. Of course, you know, the bomb that appears similar to the chalice. Well, the term bang really did not necessarily come from bang. In fact, the term bang that the Indians would use came from the city of Bang. Now, Bang is a county in Liberia. And when you go to Bang, you see the ancient people going back thousands of years from Bang using the chalice. You know, what you may call the bomb, made from bamboo and clay and other items, even gold and, and, and iron. So you see the bong and, and the horn of the cattle being used by the elders when you go to bong. And again, that is in Liberia. So again, because Africa is the ancient home, the home of the ancient sea, the term of the country or the county or the city where everybody's blazing the bomb, you know, became the term for the cannabis itself in, in, East, in East Ethiopia, which is India, which is bong or bahang. And that is why now you would see Shiva. Shiva is referred to as the Lord of the Bahang. And Shiva being the Lord of the Bang, the story says that when Shiva went up into Mount Kailash, Shiva came back down with the, the cannabis in one hand and the book of yoga in the other hand, highlighting the importance of balancing the cannabis with the yoga. In fact, the yoga is considered to be the practice of meditation, the, the art form that you utilize when you are spiritually engaged with the cannabis. And that is to highlight the difference between the sacramental aspect of the cannabis and the recu recreational aspect of the cannabis. Because recreation is different than sacramental. Sacramental is the yoga. Sacramental is deep breathing. Sacramental is humming. Sacramental is the full works and chanting, 
You know, recreation is lighting a spliff and 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 your boy kick the ball and make the next shot, the man. That's recreation, huh? you know. So there's a difference. So so sacramental now is the purpose of the herb, eh? It's the sacred meat. Mm? The sacrament, it's the a sacred meat. Very, very important. So Shiva is considered the lord of the bang. But remember, the bang or the bong is an ancient city in Africa. And we've been banging the bong before Shiva had been sheaving the sheave. I am positive about that. Remember what the sister said last night, uh, the, the archaeologist from Israel. Remember what she said about Dr. Um, Wurigi um, from the Lemba? Those of you who were with us. And this is why I will encourage you, family, once again. Make sure you become a subscriber to the Tiger's Nest radio program. Uh, there's so much that you that you get on, on offer, so much in store for you, I should say, when you become a subscriber to the Tiger's Nest radio program. She said of the Lemba people, and she's a Jew, they've been here before us. Yeah. Hey, before we continue, let me give you some more information on the Tiger's Nest. Don't go anywhere. Give thanks. Let me ask you a question, family. Are you a member of the Tiger's Nest subscription team? If the answer is no, well, you are really missing out. First of all, the Tiger's Nest subscription is only $25 a month. And you will receive, listen to this, each and every episode of our nightly radio program, The Tiger's Nest information, inspiration, and a lot more. In addition to this, Advanced Subscription will give you a copy of all of our video documentaries, whether they be full length or short, to include a penny neck, the Night of the Black Tiger, and the Santa Claus Master, just to name a few, all for free. You will also receive every new upcoming video documentary again whether it be full length or short for only 25 dollars per month as a subscriber to the tiger's nest but wait there is more much more all books written by myself honorable priest isaac will be given for free to all subscribers including our upcoming books all of our subscribers will have free access to all of our special events, lectures, webinars, and conferences that are valued $100 or less. And this access, again, will be for free. Plus, all of our one-time payment courses, for example, Ancient Astronomy, and the Evolution Motivational Business Course will be for half price to all our Tiger's Nest subscribers. Wow! All of this and more for a subscription of only $25 per month. Now listen to this. You could also get a six month or an annual subscription plan which will be much more economic. Family, this is it. For more information, in fact, to sign up and become a subscriber, visit our website, Priest Isaac Institute.com, or just send me an email, Priest Isaac Institute at gmail.com, and become a subscriber to the Tiger's Nest. And never miss another episode again. Plus, much, much, much more. <laughs> Blessed love. Plus, much, much, much more. All right. So, yeah, the Lord of the Bang, that's what they would refer to um, Shiva, Shiva as the Lord of the Bang. So, once again, you know, for those who may be just coming in, just giving you a, a run up, a highlight as it relates to the history of the cannabis, especially in its sacred aspect, especially in its sacramental um, viewpoint as the tree of a life, that spiritual connection, that's what it is. 
one of those psychoactive plants of which there are several of them, but this is the Lord of them all, mm -hmm, without a doubt. And one of the things that I highlighted there a moment ago of interest and importance is the fact that the yoga, which is, you know, and yoga is more than maybe what you may be thinking, you know, yoga is, is life. Yoga, the, the so-called practice of yoga is life. That is why there's so many different variations of the yoga, you know, so many different aspects of the yoga. Those of you those of you who actually do yoga with the Honorable Empress Naya, you would see, you know, you you surely would have that experience of the the different the the the, the to me the countless different of different um angles that you could take yoga from. I am telling you, you know, I would have never experienced um, a yoga session with the Honorable Empress Naya that was similar to another one. I mean, every time I go to a yoga session, it's always something different. It's always something new. I, I mean, yoga from all sorts of different angles. Yoga when you don't move at all. It's it's some deep, deep, deep stuff, you know, and it is good when, you know, you have a professional expert, a real expert, not just a spiritual stretcher, but a real expert when it comes to the whole aspect of yoga. You burn a chalice now and then you start to go into the yoga stuff. It's some deep, deep vibes. So, so, so when you get the, the understanding of, of, again, Shiva coming from the mountain with the, the manual of the yoga in one hand and the cannabis in the other hand, it is a serious thing. So also those who worship Shiva and follow Shiva, there's a drink that they partake of that is known as Bang Lassi. You would name Bang Lassi. You know, um, it's a drink that's also made replacing the cannabis or the bang, which is cannabis, with mango. And you have mango lassi. Many of you may know of the mango lassi. You see, see lassi, mango lassi, bang lassi. I tell you, sensi lassi. Good. So <laughs> the sadhus, you know, many people consider that the sadhus people were the originators of the Rastafari tradition. Why? Because, you know, the sadhus are quite famous for their, 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 their um, ganja smoking and chalice-like smoking as well. I never see them wrapping up no spliff unless they do that now in this modern time. And of course, their locks and they wrap their heads like turban and the whole Rasta vibes and they're vegan and the whole world. So many ones consider the fact that, you know, the Indians were brought down in the Caribbean as indentured servants. So somehow they were, they got, they, they influenced the black people who rose up as Rastafari in the early 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, etc. Now you see, that may be so. Some truth may be there, you know. Nothing wrong with, of you know, influencing the locks and the herb and whatever have you. But you must keep in mind, I just took you from the ancient world where we would have influenced them. I just carried you back to Bong, the ancient city, <laughs> where we would have influenced them. I carried you to Kemet, you know, where we found ganja pollen and, 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 and ganja fiber and resin in different tombs, where we would have influenced the whole world. I showed you the leaf, um, the shim shim su above the head of Shisha. You know, this is the goddess of wisdom from creation. So we would have influenced them all. Even the locks, you can find it on the walls of Kemet. I'm talking about the ancient civilization and the daughter of Kush, the mother of India, China, and Japan, and the rest of them. So we would have originally influenced them. So whatever little influence we may have received from them in this back end time, we give thanks for preserving it, but it's all right. It's originally ours. Even if it's Kung Fu, Karate, the Samurai warrior style, everything originally comes from us. You know that, you see. So the, 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 the Sadhus would partake of a specific uh, uh, form of the cannabis known as charas. 
something similar to a, a hard haish, um, the charras made from the resin and, and utilized and burnt just like the herb itself. So again, so the sadhus obviously utilizing the cannabis as I think the whole world knows. And then you have the um, Zoroaster, the worship of Arua Mazda. And for those who worship Arua Mazda in the book known as El Zen Avesta, the Zen Avesta, it speaks about, again, the importance of the cannabis. In fact, it is in Elzen Avesta where cannabis is mentioned as a sacred herb or a sacrament. In fact, it is a priest of this order, one priest Ardak, those of you who know of priest Ardak, uh, we rat. He would have, he specifically, is known to have gone on spiritual journeys because of him, you know, utilizing the cannabis. And he is said to be the individual who has created that whole concept of the heaven and hell because of the, the visions that he would have seen by his use of the cannabis and taking those spiritual journeys. That's priest Ardak Wirat. And then now, you have a, a, a specific um, sect as such of the Buddhist, Hindu, Zoroaster traditions, ones who would have formed a specific sect known as the Tantra. Now, I know many ones know of Tantra yoga and, and the Tantra sexual activities, but Tantra is actually a, a group of Hindu and Buddhists from the 6th century that really um, created somewhat a, a different style of practice and worship. And in, in the writings of Mahara um, Nirvana Tantra, it speaks of the bang, which of course is the cannabis. It speaks of the bang being necessary for true liberation. Maha Nirvana, Maha Nirvana. In that book, Mahanavana Tantra, it speaks of the bar being essential or necessary for the true or what is also considered the great revolution. So when you understand that science there, it's, it's very important. Now, and in that book, it also says this in a prayer, may this cannabis be a blessing to my heart. Also in the book, Bang is considered in order to liberate oneself and those who uh, and those specifically who desire mental upliftment. And it is also encouraging that one practice yoga to follow the true law of Shiva to become immortal in this world. All of that is in the book, <laughs> Maha Nirvana. Nirvana uh, is somewhat like heaven, Maha Nirvana Tantra. And again, that is the Tantra is really a group of warriors as well, who really came from a mixture of the Hindu, Buddhist, and maybe a touch of the Zoroaster in it in the sixth century, who created their somewhat own uh, ideological outlook on the whole aspect of Buddhism, Hinduism, etc. And then, of course, now you have in Sikhism, you have uh, a special type of Sikh. Many of you know the Sikhs, uh, especially even in the metropolis of the world, you have a lot of large Sikh communities. But there's a specific warrior class known as the Nihan. And the Nihan is well known for the use of something known as Nidan, which is really, again, the cannabis. And they are, they are said to have utilized the cannabis before warfare. You know, that is something within their tradition, within their practice, utilizing the cannabis before they literally go to war. And these are the Zeeks. 
these are the Zeeks, the peaceful, loving Zeeks, but there's a warrior class of the Zeeks. And they utilize the cannabis before they go and slaughter people. All right, interesting. All spiritual ones. I mean, listen, family, this is deep because you read your scripture, the cannabis is all in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The the cannabis that is used to make that make that special oil. The anointing oil for the tabernacle and the ark of the covenant, etc. etc. And listen. You see, even the, the Zeke people, according to history, of course, you know, hemp and cannabis uh, had its problem in the British colonies, even in this time. But in 1893, 1894, there was a special Indian hemp um, drug commission that was done. And the report came out where in the British government would have pardoned, although banning alcohol, drugs, and uh, uh, I think it's opium at the time, but they would not, at least in the case of the Zeke community, they allowed them to utilize the, the ban, as they said, that it is not harmful, especially if it is used in um, a moderate way. Now, that report, once could go and look it up for yourself, the report of the Indian Hemp Drug Commission. And, you know, that is just bridging you into the modern time and reefer madness and all of these propaganda films that would have, you know, arisen their, their ugly heads and would have started the campaign of, of, de of criminalizing, I should say, the cannabis in the mind of many, wherein it's obvious that the cannabis sativa is a holy herb, the holy herb, the tree of life. Specifically also, if we're gonna speak of it on a medical level, it's, 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 it's undeniable. That is why even today it has taken over the market on the medical level, medical cannabis, medical marijuana. On the industrial level, we have not even touched upon that. We know the first canvas is cannabis. We know the ropes that Columbus and these ones use to, to fasten their ships, you know, is from the cannabis and from the hemp fiber and shoes and and jeans, and we can go on and on, and fuel, and 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 the whole um, car that was built by Henry Ford, and we can go on and on by the Ford Company, and we can go on and on. But the point I'm making here that on the sacramental level, on the spiritual level, which is obviously linked with the historical level, it is undeniable that the cannabis is at the top of the line. And you see, there are many, I would repeat, there are many psychoactive, um, psychedelic uh, uh, plants that one can utilize, and even the, mus the mushroom, and the blue lotus, and even the acacia brew. And then you have the ayahuasca, and a few others. But I am positive that the cannabis sativa is at the top of the line perfect in its nature and in its design for sane and calm and reflective meditation. No vomiting necessary. And I would encourage family, please do not mix the cannabis with no tobacco. You're just going back. It's tobacco. Take it from I. You need the clear, clean, crisp cannabis. And this is another thing. That genetically modified stuff is very dangerous. You got to keep in mind, this is going in your head for those of you who are partaking of the cannabis in the bomb style, just like the people in Liberia, just like the people of bomb. Yeah. Give thanks, life giver and the keeper of life. If you know your Bible and you do not know your history, the knowledge of your Bible will become a mystery. And of course, you know, it takes some real eyes to realize the real lies that are amongst us. Blessed love. Ja Rastafari.
Prosperity is a herbal remedy that has been naturally designed to nourish the prostate gland. Prosperity uses a combination of leaves, roots, and barks to create a tincture designed to nourish your prostate gland. It also will assist in prostate-related issues such as erectile dysfunction, swollen prostates, and problems related to the passage of urine. Call or WhatsApp 728-8289, 728-8289 and get your bottle today. Prosperity. Are you interested in learning ancient astronomy, archaeoastronomy, or astrotheology? Well, the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge is now offering certified courses in the field of astronomy covering all the above mentioned. Sign up now for our online courses or visit us in Antigua in the Caribbean for seven days and seven nights of practical underground research plus archaeoastronomical observation on Green Castle Hill. You will learn how to identify the stars, the constellations and the planets as well as their makeup and their value. This will be a studycation. Enroll today by visiting our website priestisaacinstitute.com or sending us an email priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com or search us out on TripAdvisor, the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge. Ancient Astronomy, Archaeoastronomy, and Astrotheology, the wave of the future.